This video was sponsored by Squarespace. Do you struggle with cracks in your pottery? Nothing is more disappointing than spending hours and hours working on a whole kiln load of work only to find out that 50% of your pottery is completely cracked. Today, we are going to talk about the eight most common cracks and exactly how to prevent them. Before we get started, I want to mention that all the illustrations that you're going to see in this video are coming from this book. Now, this book is a total Bible for potters. I highly recommend it. If you want to go into more depth in the topics that we're covering today, I definitely recommend checking this book out. I'll have it linked down in the description. So what causes cracks? The root cause of all cracks is stress. Okay, so that is stress of you on the clay, but it could also be the materials that you're using. So like the glazes or the underglaze causing stress on your clay. Now, the whole process of just making a pot causes stress on the clay, but we do a few things during our potter practice to mitigate that stress, to cause the least amount of stress possible so that the strength of the pot itself can withhandle that stress. When the stress is too much for the pot to handle, that's when you get cracks. First, I want to give you like a general overview as to what causes cracks. And then later on in the video, I'm going to go into very specific cracks so you can diagnose specifically what's going on with your pottery. The first thing that causes cracks in your pottery is firing your clay too high or for too long. So make sure you are doing your research when you are programming your kiln or you can do what most potters do and just copy the program of someone else who's using similar materials as you. I have my program linked right up here. The second thing that causes general cracking is firing multiple times. Ideally, you want to be firing two times um, unless you're going to be adding like a luster glaze. Repeated firings causes stress on your clay because it is going to vitrify at the end of its final firing temperature. Each time you fire, it's going to get more and more brittle which can cause more cracks. Okay, and then drying. This is, I think, one of the main causes of cracks. So drying either too fast or unevenly. Too fast if you are candling your pots or if you are, a lot of times people will put them out in the sun to dry, but if you are in a very dry, hot place, the sun can actually dry your pots out way too much. Here in Germany, it's not gonna be a problem. <laughs> uneven drying can happen from a bunch of different things. If the bottom is too thick for the walls, if the bottom is very thick, it's going to dry a lot slower than the walls of your pot. The other thing that I cannot believe I see people not do because this is like my biggest secret to preventing all cracks is as soon as your pot is strong enough for you to go like this, as soon as you can flip it over, this is gonna solve all your ass cracks. In my opinion, this is like the biggest cause for S cracks that I have ever seen. I mean, it causes other problems too that we're gonna go into, but flip your pot over as soon as it's dry enough to support itself. If you leave your pot like this, the bottom doesn't get any air, especially if you're trimming a foot, the bottom is going to be thicker than the walls like after the first day before you do your trimming. So you wanna flip your pot as soon as possible. That was like a major side tangent. <laughs> Let's see what else. Oh yeah, cooling the pottery too fast, of course. So this whole firing thing is not relevant if you're working in a community studio, but if you're opening your kiln too early, remember thermal shock exists. That can just cause your, all your pottery to shatter. I recommend not opening your kiln anytime earlier than 100 degrees Celsius. That's pretty much like the standard, but depending on your pottery, it might be able to withstand that. I rather wait till 100 degrees Celsius, mostly because of my kiln elements. I don't want to wear them out any faster than I have to. That's another topic. <laughs> right, and then variations in the thickness of your pot. Just like I was saying before, this can also cause uneven drying, but in general, just having a very thick base and very thin walls will cause stress between them. And we're gonna go into that specific crack later, but try and keep your walls and your base about the same thickness. And then the last general cause of cracking is a bad glaze fit. So remember that clays and glazes, they're both going to shrink in the kiln. So you have a good fit when the clay and the glaze both shrink at about the same rate and about the same size. If you have a bad fit, the clay is either going to shrink more or less than the glaze. 
and it's going to cause tension literally between the clay and the glaze itself. And that can cause cracks like crazing and some other ones that we're going to talk about in a little bit. So in that case, it might literally just be an issue of choosing a different glaze or choosing a different clay. Okay, so everything on that list is what causes general stress to your pottery, which can cause any of the cracking issues that I'm about to go into. So now I want to go into the specific cracking issues and their specific causes. So if you're having, for example, an S crack or a shatter crack, you know how to deal with it. Let's take a little break to talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. If you've never heard about Squarespace before, they are a website that you can go to to create your very own professional looking website. I've personally been using Squarespace ever since I started my online business and I'm still using them today. There's a few things that I love about Squarespace, one of which is their online store where you can sell services, physical or digital products, just like I do with my printable pottery templates. Two, I love their blog feature where you can create really easy and really beautiful looking blogs for your website that feature photos, text, or even video. And three, did you know that they also have an in-person POS system? That's a point of sale system. So you aren't just limited to selling online, but you can also sell out in the real world. So head to squarespace.com right now for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash pottery to the people for 10% off your very first website or domain. Now let's get back to cracks. So first we're going to talk about the vertical crack. And once again, all of these illustrations I'm using are from this book. So for hand builders, the most common cause of this vertical crack has something to do with the way that it was made. So basically what you're doing is you're creating a weak point in the clay. So for example, if you're rolling out the slabs, you could have not used thickness gauges and you made like a thinner part there. Or if you're overworking the clay, like if it if you bend it back and forth multiple times, it's going to kind of break the bonds between the clay and that will just create a weak point, like a hinge. So if you're getting this type of crack, and especially if you're a hand builder, look into how you are manipulating the clay, how you're treating the clay up until it gets fired. Because even if you're just bending the clay too much at the very beginning, that crack could not appear until the very end, but it is caused by that manipulation at the very beginning. Crazy, right? So the shattered bottom has all to do with unevenness between the base and the bottom. So either the base is too thick or it could even be too thin, which sucks. It could be either, but ideally you want to have your base as thick as your walls. The shattered crack can also happen when there's too much water pooled into the bottom of your cup. Like for example, if you're throwing on the wheel and you forget to just like wipe up all of that extra slip at the end, that's super important because that slip soaks into the bottom and can cause cracking. Once again, if it's dried too quickly, AKA the base is unevenly dried with the walls that can also cause the shattered base. Oh, and the other thing is if I've seen this happen with some students sometimes like, okay, so they'll pour in some glaze. Like this is bisque already. It's a fine pot. You're going to pour in some glaze and then you're going to wait like three minutes and the glaze is just going to soak in and then you pour it out. That's going to cause way too much glaze on the bottom. So glaze pooling on the bottom can definitely cause these shatter bases like for sure. So don't do that. So let's go into S cracks. They are only happening, I think, to wheel thrown pieces. If it's gonna be hand built and you're gonna get an S crack, it's just going to be like a line. It's not going to be that very distinctive S shape. Once again, 99.9% .9 of this is from uneven drying. So my checklist for avoiding S cracks. You've just thrown your pot. You want to make sure you remove all of the extra slip from the base. So get your hand in there with your sponge. I like to do it as it's spinning so I don't leave any marks. Get your hand in there, soak up all of that extra water. That's step number one. And then step number two is as soon as the pot is dry enough, flip your pot over. Just flip it over. Like you don't need to wait till it's leather hard. Just flip it over. Something that else that I think should be talked about more, but it's one of these things where I think is something that causes S cracks, but I'm not positive because I don't have any proof yet. 
um, is those new bat systems that everyone's marketing where you can just leave your pot on the tile until it just like pops off. And then it's like, ooh, I don't need to trim it. That's really cool <laughs> in theory, um, but it might make you more prone to S cracks because once again, the bottom is not getting any air until it is leather hard. Leather hard is a pretty long ways along before you flip it in my opinion, and with the clays that I use. It might be totally fine and perfect for the clays that you're using, but if you're having problems with S cracks, it's something to consider looking into. Okay, and then I'm just going to talk about this once. Maybe I should make a whole video on the compression controversy, but my two cents are is that I have never compressed the bottoms of my pots, and I've never had a problem, as long as I'm flipping my pots, never had a problem with S cracks from not compressing. I don't believe in compression. A lot of people believe very strongly in compression. A, a lot of other people like me don't believe in it because they say that clay is like a liquid or something and that you can't actually compress it. I don't understand any of that, but I do think it needs to be addressed in this video because everyone is going to be screaming in the comments, compression, compression, compression stops S cracks. I don't believe in compression. If it works for you, it works for you. Moving on from clay controversies, let's talk about edge cracks. So this is a little bit less common, but I saw this a lot in my community studio in like very beginner work. This is once again, something to do with the disparity between the thickness of the base and the thickness of the walls, but it has actually a different root cause, which is thermal shock. So what happens is, let's say this pot has a very, very thick base and very thin walls. If this is sitting, this has like a very big bottom too, right? This is more common with big, bigger bottom pieces, like wider. Think about it when it's sitting on the kiln shelf as the kiln is cooling. The kiln shelf itself retains a lot of heat. And then if you have a very thick bottom on your pot, it's also going to retain a lot of that heat. So what happens is the rim cools and this base is still extremely, extremely hot. And that's just gonna cause a difference in shrinkage and you're just going to get along that bottom here, just a crack. Crack number five is a shatter crack. This is just a fit issue between the clay and the glaze. So I see this most commonly when you just glaze the inside and especially if you combine that with thin walls of your pottery. The root cause is there is a fit issue between the clay and the glaze. You should be able to throw thin pottery with just glaze on the inside. That should be a thing if the glaze fits the clay. But if the glaze doesn't fit the clay and you're only glazing the inside, it's going to start pulling, 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 pulling at the walls. And if the walls are very thin, it's just gonna go ding. <laughs> you know, it's just gonna. So crack number six is an easy one. It's just shivering. This means that the glaze kind of pops off. It's not going to adhere. Basically what's happening here is that the glaze is for some reason unable to adhere properly to the clay. So that can come from a misapplication of underglaze, sanding and not cleaning your bisque afterwards. Like if it's really dusty, it can come from leaving it on your shelf for a week or longer. <laughs> and the general dust in your studio is going to settle upon it. So it can be caused by like, if you put lotion on your hands and you're touching your potter, or if you have really sweaty hands that day, like basically you wanna keep your bisque clean and anything that you add to it, like the oils from your skin, that might be a barrier between the glaze adhering to the clay. So that's called shivering. Okay, crack number seven, this is a fun one because whether or not it's a good thing or a bad thing depends on your perspective. So this is something that is called either crackle if you want it or crazing if you don't want it. These are these tiny micro fractures in the glaze itself. So if you are trying to prevent this, basically it is something to do with a bad fit between the clay and the glaze. Once again, it's about fit. So you need to alter the clay, alter the glaze to make a better fit if you don't want the crazing. This can look like the crackle glazes look, or it can just look like hairline fractures, like pew across. It doesn't need to be the full crackle. Now, this is something that can happen way later on, even like weeks later, you can hear the little ping, ping, ping in your studio or 
in your kitchen dining room, the crackle is starting to come out. Basically this entire time since you unloaded the kiln, there's been tension between the clay and the glaze. And at some point it might just crack. It can either be like a normal part of unloading a kiln or a disaster, <laughs> depending on what you want. Okay, the last crack is one that is near and dear to my heart. Oh, I need a, I need a pot with a handle. Is near and dear to my heart and that is springing. So I used to have this problem with my pottery all the time. Springing is when your handle does not attach to the wall. Either you get a little crack or it just removes itself completely. Now, this is always a fault with the making. Even though it might not appear until way at the end, the fault happens when you are literally attaching the handle to the wall of your pot. So either the pot was too dry when you tried to attach a handle or you didn't slip and score properly or they dried at different rates. That was a big one, I think, for me because, pro tip, how I solved it was I always put some plastic over it for 24 hours for the clay to fully homogenize and the moisture levels would even out. And then only after that, I would remove the plastic and let it dry out normally. This was a total game changer for me. So maybe it's a game changer for some of you guys. Just if you put any attachments on your pot, it doesn't have to be a handle, like any sort of attachments, let it homogenize under plastic for 24 hours. And you're going to have a lot more success with those attachments. So those are the eight most common cracks that I've seen in beginner potters. We all deal with cracks. It's just part of the craft.